Are you familiar with the concept of executive clemency? Well, if you've been charged with a federal crime, it's a concept that you really want to learn about. And the sooner you learn about it, the better off you're going to be. My name is Michael Santos, and I'm with the team at Prison Professors. We strive to produce content that will help people who have been charged with a federal crime or really any justice impacted individual figure out what steps he or she can take to prepare for the best possible outcome. Now, the best possible outcome isn't always the outcome that a person wants. Obviously, a person wants to get out of prison and get or, or maybe avoid prison altogether, but that's not always possible. You see, none of us can change the bad decisions or the decisions or circumstances we faced in the past, but all of us can work toward building a better outcome. I am somebody who made really bad decisions as a young man. When I was 20 years old, I trafficked in cocaine, and as a result of those bad decisions, I was arrested, I was convicted, I, after a trial, a judge sentenced me to serve 45 years, and I was in prison for 9,500 days, that's 26 years, between August 11th, 1987, and the time of my release in August of 2013. But during that journey, I learned a great deal, and I'm deeply committed to striving to be the change that I want to see in the world, as, as Gandhi suggested that we all should do. And so I want to share some of the lessons that I learned while going through a very lengthy prison sentence. And one of those, one of those uh, tools, or, recent, or, or, or um, I guess, yeah, it's a tool that I want to share, is this concept of research and learning how do you find information about what executive clemency and commutations are. And so I'm going to share my screen right now to show you a great resource for anybody who has access to the internet and wants to learn more, but if, you, if you're inside of a jail or a prison and you're watching these videos that I create, then I'm going to share my screen with hopes of, of showing you what that research would look like. So I'm gonna switch over here to my computer screen and show you this website that you could have your family visits, visit if you don't have access to the internet, and that's a website at justice.gov. This is a website that is uh, published by the uh, Department of Justice and it has all types of information. Now the home page features people who have faced challenges or who are currently facing challenges as well as news about the uh, Department of Justice and how it operates. So one of the areas that you could that, that somebody could plug in is um, executive clemency and if you plug that in you're going to see in, in the search bar up here exec executive, I can't see so well, executive clemency, right? You plug that information in there and you end up with a, with a series of, of other articles that may prove helpful when, for, for anybody who's looking for this kind of information. Now, what's important to understand about the entire clemency process is there are many different forms of clemency. Clemency is, is a process that is guaranteed by the, I don't know which amendment, but, but of the US Constitution. Let's see if they say something about it. If I click on a new tab here, um, and then let me go to that tab. Let's see, now this only gives information here about, about people that have received pardons or clemency from different presidents. But there are, the different forms of clemency include a pardon, but it also includes, and a pardon is, is a forgiveness of the crime by the President of the United States. Only the president is the only person that can issue a grant of executive clemency. If somebody is in a state system, it would typically be the governor, who is the chief executive officer of, of that particular state. Or in some states, there is a, pardon, uh, a board of pardons, paroles, and clemency, and there is somebody lower level than the governor that, that could issue clemency. But in the federal system, it's only the president of the United States. And there's actually an office of the pardon attorney that offers information about how the entire process works and what is available, what different types of clemency are available. So that would include a pardon, which is a forgiveness of the offense. It could also include a, a commutation, which is a, um, a, a way for the, for the president to commute a sentence, to let uh, to forgive a portion of the sentence. That is the process that would apply to most people because most people who are going into the criminal justice system haven't been convicted yet, um, but once they are convicted or once they are sentenced, 
then it, it, they're serving a sanction and they may want to have that, sec, that sanction lowered. Well, the only person that can do it is the president of the United States. And typically there is a process. And that process is to go through the pardon attorney's office. And the president isn't beholden to that process. The president can do, um, can exercise his own authority on, on what he, or if it were a woman president, what she wants to do is the office of the president is the one that's a, that, that has the power to commute a sentence or to grant executive clemency. But if you go to this website here of the pardon attorney, you can not only see how many people apply to get commute, their sentences commuted, but you can see how many people were granted commutations. You can also look at the, at the actual form that somebody would have to complete. You could look at a form which talks about um, the process that you submit the petition to the office of the pardon attorney. Um, for the, they make it clear that this, this process only applies to federal convictions. Um, let me see if I can move that over so you can see it a little better. Uh, there we go. Um, it only applies to federal convictions. Um, the only purpose of this is to reduce a sentence. That, that, that's what a commutation is about is it's about reducing a sentence, and that sentence could also include a monetary fine. Um, it's completion of court challenges. Um, so you, this, is, this is telling you you've got to have exhausted all of your judicial processes first. Um, there is a commutation of probation, supervised release, or special parole. There's also this clause in here. Um, it speaks about immigration status, additional criminal records, penalties for statements. So all these subheadings can help a person understand. And I hope that for those who are reviewing this while they are in jail or prison, I hope you have the ability to pause um, so, that you can, so that you can get this information and figure out how would it apply to you. The more a person knows about this process, the better off a person becomes to start building a record that may make him or her a better candidate for clemency. I applied for clemency while I was serving 26 years in federal prison and it, I was never granted the, the, the clemency. It's important to realize how much of a challenge it, it has been historically to get the president to pay attention to somebody in prison. Now, when President Bush was in office, uh, or rather President Trump was in office, he pretty much disregarded the office of the pardon attorney and made his own decisions unilaterally. There were people that didn't even apply that got pardons. That's, he was kind of an outlier in that regard like he was in so many other areas where he just made his own decisions. It's probably wise for somebody going into the system to figure out what has the traditional process been. And to understand the traditional process, you should first of all take a look at this form and say, what would you have to complete? Well, you'd have to complete exactly what it is you want, reduction of prison sentence only, um, reduction of prison sentence and remission of fine or restitution, um, you know, one or the other or something else, because these are very specific processes. It goes to the president of the United States, as you can see, and then you, the person can do it himself. He may want to have somebody help him uh, craft a more compelling uh, petition, but the, the person could also be skilled and do it on his own. Many people have succeeded by submitting the petition on their own, but the more a person understands the process, the better off that individual is. So it would indicate where he or she is confined, whether the person is a United States citizen. These are all just really perfunctory questions uh, that, that anybody can answer. Have you submitted one before? I was convicted on a plea of so you want to be honest here, you know, where did you plead guilty? Did you go to trial and plead not guilty? Um, in the, what district were you uh, convicted? What jurisdiction is it? Um, then you're going to want to scroll down here and provide all of the details. Like I was sentenced to what, however length of time the person was sentenced to, um, the fine, how much is the fine amount? Um, how long is the term of supervised release? The person will want to talk about when he or she began serving the sentence, which is here in the document. 
So you see, you just have to really answer all of these questions. Um, but this is a big one. Is your appeal concluded? Now, with President Trump, that didn't matter. But if you're going to go through the pardon attorney's office, if you do not um, submit this accurately, it's unlikely or you have a lower likely uh, chance of success in having them even consider the document. So you provide all of this information to the best of your ability um, and you're not limited to the amount of space you see on these forms. A person could also um, supplement this information right here. And, you know, so this is just getting through all of the legal information. But I think that the really important one is right here. Provide a complete and detailed account of the offense for which you seek a commutation, including the full extent of your involvement. If you need more space, you may complete your answer on, sep on a separate sheet of paper and attach it to the petition. Now, when I submitted my petition, I submitted an entire you know, document where I completed you know, tried to show everything that I had done while I was in prison and all the efforts that I had made to reconcile with society because you're really making one of the biggest sales of your life. You're trying to show the, the people that represent the president of the United States why you are a worthy candidate. You want to be honest. So when it asks about all of your arrests, be honest and answer to the best of your ability understanding that there are going to be there's going to be an investigation following this petition you're going to want to talk about all of your convictions and describe everything that happened then you're going to want to go in here and speak about your reasons for seeking clemency you've got to be extraordinary and compelling this is a phrase that you should be thinking about at the very start of a journey and then continue asking yourself every day what am I doing to be extraordinary and compelling? State your reasons for seeking the commutation of sentence. If you need more space, you may complete your answer on a separate sheet of paper and attach it to the petition. Again, it's encouraging you to, to really provide extensive information about why you are extraordinary and compelling. And then you have to submit this by oath, under oath, um, you know, swearing to be telling the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God, under the penalty of perjury. Now, what I really want to impress upon you is honesty. You can't expect to get clemency if you have not been honest in talking about why you're a worthy candidate. Remember that in our country, we have this process to go through um, justice, and that is called due process. So they're going to expect the, um, the you to have followed that process. Again, President Trump did it differently. But uh, during the 26 years that I served in prison, every other president really followed the process. They wanted somebody to go through um, the entire, uh, you know, the procedures that are in place. You don't have to have a lawyer. It may help you to have a lawyer. It would definitely help you to have an advocate on your behalf because the, the, the pardon attorney works like this. If it gets your petition, you're going to be one of many, thousands. What you have to do is bring attention to yourself. You've got to be as Seth Godin, the um, great marketing genius, speaks about a purple cow. He tells this story. If you're driving down the road and you see a lot of cows in the pasture, nobody's really going to look because they're just cows in the pasture. But if you see a purple cow, that stands out and everybody looks. And that's really the goal of marketing. Well, so creating a petition for clemency is, a, is going to require you to be thinking in advance. I want to be that person that stands out. I want to be extraordinary and compelling. I want to show that I have done a tremendous amount to prove worthy of liberty or worthy of mercy. That's probably the better word as you're asking for mercy. You're asking for the president of the United States to have mercy on you and to show some compassion for what or perhaps even show why you are why you have worked so hard that continued incarceration is not in the best interests of justice. And there, there can be great reasons for that. But you know the process. Here's what's going to happen. If you submit that to the pardon attorney, the pardon attorney is then going to notify the FBI, and the FBI is going to launch an investigation. 
that investigation is going to notif include notifying the prosecutors in your jurisdiction because the, the, the part attorney is going to want to consider what did the prosecutors have to say. The FBI is going to try to contact or co connect with your with a sentencing judge. They want to find out what does the sentencing judge feel should happen. They may reach out to the victims of the crime and find out what do the victims have to say with regard to, um, you know, how would they weigh in? It may, may not happen, but when I spoke to and interviewed the pardon attorney of the United States or somebody who worked in the pardon attorney's office for 12 years, Sam Morrison, and I will link to a podcast that I did with Sam Morrison asking these very questions, he said that that was the process of the pardon attorney to reach out to all stakeholders, prosecutor, judge, and victims and get their case. And the FBI will compile a report and that report will be something that the pardon attorney weighs. After the pardon attorney has made its decision, if it ever makes a decision, it would go to the office of the general counsel or uh, one of the attorneys for the White House with its recommendation. And at that point, it would then uh, potentially go to the president of the United States who will consider whether a uh, grant of executive clemency or a commutation or a pardon is warranted. Now, again, you want to be that purple cow. You want to be thinking about everything you can possibly do to prove worthy of leniency, prove worthy of mercy. So like, what are some things that a person could do? Well, he or she could give back to society. He or she could be working to improve outcomes of the criminal justice system. He or she could have educated himself or herself and earned academic degrees. He or she could have published a book. He or she could have done a number of, of things that, that would show that person is a worthy candidate for relief or rather a stronger candidate for relief. So I really would recommend that any individual that is considering executive clemency do some research about best in class approaches. Now, there's of course a lot of political influence that plays into this. Sometimes it's the powerful and the wealthy and the well-connected that get heard before others. You can't complain about that. You just have to understand that's the way the world works. People that are purple cows are people that have been successful in bringing a group of advocates around them. So be thinking about the advocates that may come on your team. Think about how can you mobilize a grassroots effort to show why you are a great candidate for mercy from the President of the United States. And then don't, expect, don't spare any effort to bring attention to, and that, that could include just launching a website and publishing every day. It could include reaching out to celebrities who have connections to people that may know the president. It could include so many efforts. Really the only limitation is the limitation that you place on yourself. But no matter how hard you work, that doesn't mean you're going to get it. In fact, if you look at our website at prisonprofessors.com and you click on that section about reputation um, at the top of the page, you will see it's under services and there's reputation. You will see all of the efforts that I made while going through 9,500 days in prison because I wanted to be, I wanted to build an extraordinary and compelling record, a record that would have differentiated me from every other person in prison because I believe that was what was going to be necessary in order to be that purple cow. Now today, in the era of the first step back, there are other things that a person can do and I would um, encourage you to also learn about the first step back. We will do our best to produce more content to make the first step back a little bit more understandable for people who don't have experience in the criminal justice system or people that don't have um, a law degree or a legal background. It's really, these are what I would call extra judicial processes. I never ask anybody to do anything that I didn't do. These were the strategies that empowered me through 26 years in prison. They helped me to build a support system. They helped me to build a career. They helped me to get married while I was inside of a federal prison, but they didn't get me out of prison one day sooner. Now, of course, I served time during a different era. I concluded my sentence in 2013, and that was just at the time that we kind of started in this country talking about the injustices of mass incarceration 
and, and how we as a society need to do better. But we as people who are in the system have to do better as well. And I would encourage anyone that's watching our programs on prison professors to think about how you can be the change that you want to see in the world. Those were guiding principles that I learned from Gandhi. They guided my every step and I hope they guide yours as well. I am Michael Santos with Prison Professors and on behalf of our entire team, I really wish you success and the best possible outcome. I encourage you to subscribe to our channels on Prison Professors or on iTunes or any place you get your content. I will do everything within my power to prove worthy of your trust and honesty and, or, or respect. Again, I never ask anybody to do anything that I didn't do and I hope that you find this information of use. Thank you.